Hey y'all, welcome to Ms. Clark's chemistry class. I've got another lab for you. In this lab, we're gonna be calculating the average atomic mass of the element penny. I know, penny is not an element, but you know what though? It makes a really good example for an average atomic mass because penny really kind of has two isotopes. Pennies used to be made of pure copper, but as time went by, a penny's worth of copper ended up being more valuable than a penny. People were trading their money in and making more money. You can't have your money be more valuable than what it's worth. So they started adding a little bit of zinc. So pennies now have a zinc core. So pre-1982 pennies are going to have a certain mass because they're pure copper. Pennies after 1982 are gonna have a different mass because they're not pure copper anymore. Now I realize not being pure copper, that's not really an isotope, but it works out really great for this lab. So penny has two isotopes, pre-1982, post-1982. You're gonna need notes, you're gonna need graph paper, you're gonna need to make a data table, possibly a periodic table. Okay, go get your things and let's get started. So our objective in this lab is to show the natural relative abundance. Remember that's the percent that's gonna show us how common or rare different forms of the isotope are. And we're gonna explain how the weighted atomic mass of the element is determined. Remember, we use that percent, that's our weight. This is a weighted average, and the average has to be weighted based on the relative abundance. Okay, so our procedure is going to be to find the mass of 10 to 15 pennies. I think I did 14. Making sure that some of the samples are before 1982 and after. I'm telling you what year the penny is as you see it go by. Now make sure you're putting this in your data table. We will need to graph these results. Okay, so here's the first penny, and it's from 1964. Here's the second penny, 1994. Hey, y'all, that's the year I graduated high school, in case you were interested. I know, I'm old. Penny number three, 2007. Penny number four, 2001. Here's our fifth penny, 2011. Penny number six, 2013. Penny number seven, 1991. Penny number eight, 1996. Penny number nine, 2012. The tenth penny, 1998. Penny number 11, 1972. Penny number 12, 1980. Penny number 13, 1979. And penny 14, 1964. Okay, so I hope you got all that data in your data table. Now we need to report out that data by making a bar graph. On the x-axis, you're gonna have the mass of the pennies. Now make sure you round the mass of the pennies to one decimal place, the tenths place. That's gonna go on the x-axis. The number of pennies should go on the y-axis. How many pennies had that mass? After you round, you're only gonna have two bars. If you've got more than two bars, mm, you're doing something wrong. Y'all, as you're making your graph, Make sure you label the X and Y axis. Also make sure and give it a title. And I shouldn't have to say this, but I'm going to straight lines. Please use straight lines, use a ruler. It ain't a lab without post lab questions. Okay, so we need to determine that percent, the relative abundance of the isotope. So here's the formula. You're gonna put the number of pennies on top, the total pennies on bottom, times it by 100, that's gonna give you a percent. So you're gonna to have to do this for both of your isotopes. So you should have two percents, one for pre-1982, one for post-1982. Again, that should be your bars as well. Are we seeing that correlation? Because we had two isotopes of pennies. So you should have two bars on your graph. Okay, so you have the mass of each isotope. You also have the percent abundance. You're ready to calculate average atomic mass. Okay, y'all, well, that's all I have for this lab. I hope you got all of your data, made your pretty bar graph. Hey, make sure you label the x-axis and the y-axis and give that graph a title. Make sure you're using straight lines. Until next time, bye, y'all.